All right. Binge and Martin, episode eight. Um, today, we're not going to <laughs> talk about episode eight. I think we got a better solution, don't you, Ant? Better solution, uh, episode eight. Obviously, the show's a great show, but not as good of a show as the show we're about to put on for you today. All right, let me uh, just do it now without further ado. Boom. Here we are. What's up, Kevin? How are you, buddy? What's going on, guys? What's up, man? How are you? Doing Dude. well, yeah. Uh, I don't know why. I went into my spam for some reason. So. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm a... how, how long ago uh, was I? <laughs> Did you send that at 2.30 and I was just kind of like sitting here <laughs> waiting for it to show up? <laughs> yeah, kind of, but I'm glad I hit you. But we were introducing the show and we were letting everybody know. We're not going to talk about episode eight today. We're going to you know, introduce something a little better, which we thought was you. So, oh, okay. Binge. Oh, so what, uh, what season are you guys on? We're, we just started the show. We're going through every oh. episode of season one. Yeah. So we oh. just, your mom just died. Is that make gotcha. sense? Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So we're on episode eight. Uh, we go by, uh, let's go Matt Schaub just to represent the Atlanta Falcons for you. How's that? <laughs> are you a, are you a sports guy, Kev? Uh, I am, but I'm not a Falcons fan. <laughs> okay, so let's just a little background about our show. Okay, we have yeah. a we have a sports show here in Chicago, um, and we liked Ozark so much that I, I've been telling D, hey, listen, you got to check this show out. It's great. The hype's real, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, so we decided to add on to our show a spinoff called oh, okay. Binge and Bartend. So oh, cool. it's our way of, we watch Ozark, we talk about it, we have a cocktail every Sunday. Um, obviously, we are done with, with all of the seasons thus far, but obviously the anticipation is real. So we really, uh, we appreciate you coming on. Yeah, but you said you're only on episode eight, right? Of Correct. Okay. Oh. Of, of the binge and bartend show, we have seen. Oh, okay. We have seen the entirety. See the of whole it. thing. Yes. Okay. Yes. I didn't know if I was allowed to spoil anything for you guys, or I, you know, I didn't want to be that kind of guy. You know, like, yeah. oh, hey, guess what happens? <laughs> yeah, no, we're no. fully invested. We're just doing it for the people. Like I've gotten, like my son wants to watch now just from watching our show. So we're doing the show. People are like getting into, it. like, oh, okay, this this might work. So, <laughs> how old your son now? He just turned 15, so. Okay, yes. He digs it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's not too family friendly, but yeah, I mean. <laughs> you know, when you get to 15 now is like 18 and 20 back in the day, the way things are working is crazy. But Yeah, I never got to watch. I think the first rated R movie I got to watch was Passenger 57 with Wesley Snipes. Yeah. I don't know why that was it, but that was like our first movie that I, and I just remember always bet on black. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I think mine was like Jason and I was scared for my life. I was Jason part four, Friday mm. the 13th, the final chapter. I, I never wanted to see a scary movie again after that. I but, watched a radar movie like, you know, in secret, but I think that was the first one I watched with my parents for some reason. Passenger 57. Go figure. <laughs> So we got some questions for you. Ant's going to kick it off that uh, okay. you know, we, we wanted to know ourselves as well as for our fans watching. So, Ant, what you got first, buddy? Um, so I, I, I've done a little research, obviously. Um, I know that you went to Clemson. Mm -hmm. So take us through, are you a football guy? Because, you know, the, the, the program has excelled tremendously under Dabo, uh, kind of used to be, I mean, don't take offense to it, but AC <laughs> football was kind of like Florida State and Florida. nobody else. Yeah, and now it's the opposite. Now it's Clemson and <laughs> nobody else. So are you, are you big into that? Did you go to a lot of the games? You know, kind of take us through Death Valley, all that whole, that whole vibe, everything about it. Oh, yeah, when I was at college uh, – I went to all the home games. Um, I haven't been back to Death Valley since I graduated in like 07, but you know, tickets are really expensive. Um, I do remember my first game uh, was when we played Georgia. Um, it was the first game of the season, my first like freshman year. I can't remember what 
uh, what year that was, but um, we got beat like 30 to zero. <laughs> was that the Matthew Stafford, no Sean Moreno team? Oh, wow. Um, this guy. With I'm trying to think. Oh, I, I, I got there in 03, 04. Was that Matthew Stafford still? Uh, was he? Probably just, just after that. Okay. I just remember we got the crap beat out of us. <laughs> like it wasn't, it was, and I remember it was, <laughs> I'd gotten really wasted the night before on, <laughs> on shots of vodka. Cause I didn't drink other than that. I know I'm going on a tangent here, but back in high school, like I didn't drink until like grad week and we had like shots of vodka. So that was my weapon of choice for myself, I guess, early on. Cause I just didn't like the taste of beer. Obviously that's changed, but um, <laughs> yeah, that was an interesting, uh, uh, Pepper Rally, whatever you want to call it, the night before the first game of the season. Absolutely. Man, I've been dying to get to a game in the Valley, man. It looks great. Uh, obviously, I, I, you know, as a kid growing up, they really didn't put many Clemson games on television because, yeah. you know, they were an ACC team and they weren't really striving. But now, you know, they're, they're top of the charts. So definitely want to uh, get down there. That's definitely on the bucket list. Um, but another thing I realized is, your your mother's a country singer oh yeah how'd you find that out and uh <laughs> the cool the cool thing about it is she did that, sing country she doesn't i mean not you know like as a right. younger she did right yeah. so you actually what, what was what was you know funny to me is so you come from this singing background however you didn't know you can sing until you got into college yeah uh so the big play uh, one semester was You're in Town, the musical. And I said, well, if I want to be a part of this, I'm going to have to learn how to sing. So I picked, you know, I, I uh, picked up the soundtrack, went to like one of the rooms in the performing arts department, like where people practice and rehearse. Uh, and I started singing and I was like, wow, that doesn't sound half bad. And then, uh, this girl uh, who I was friends with came out of one of the other rooms because she was practicing and she's like, Kevin, was that you? I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know I had, I, I had no idea what vibrato was and all that. Like I was just completely raw, but I just had that. I don't even, is that what it's called? Like where it kind of echoes at the end. <laughs> I don't know what it's I know that's what the good people do when they say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then I realized, uh, um, I mean, that's not a country musical. But I was like, all right, well, let me try some country music just to see if it's if it runs in the blood, and and yeah, it's uh, I got that uh, that twang. So it's it's like Garth Brooks's "Friends in Low Places" is like uh, is my go to when I go to karaoke um it was funny because uh when we were doing a season two like mid-season rap party they had a karaoke machine and i sang friends in low places and julia garner i could just i saw her standing there <laughs> and she was like <laughs> like i didn't know you could sing and then like the next day or so we were back in like wardrobe or something and uh hair and makeup was like kevin you got to tell the producers you can sing. They could throw that in the show at some point. I was like, I guess. Yeah, that'd be cool. So who knows? So right. are we going to see a singing? Are we going to see a singing in the future Ozark or what? Right. Uh, I mean, you never know. I think it'd make for a fun little, uh, you know, side moment in such a, a dark show, like where Sam is at a bar and he decides to get up and sing and he's like, oh, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. All right, fine for Jade. Yeah. And then I get up there and it's just like, what? <laughs> I think it would be funny. Yeah. Yeah. Be good. I got, I got a, a, a question for you, kind of a two parter. Mm -hmm. um, you've doing the research, you've been in acting close to, if not a little over 10 years. Uh, a lot of people don't get a chance to work with any Academy Award winners or nominees, but you worked with Tom Hanks, Tom Cruise, and Jake Gyllenhaal already. So uh, Tom Hanks uh, wasn't working on uh, the movie at the time. 
Um, he, he hadn't gotten there yet. Um, oh, I worked with, the uh, I worked with Matt, Matt Reese though, from the Americans. Okay. Uh, so, but it? we didn't actually have a scene to get it. I kind of, it was such a small, uh, I mean, the movie's great. I love the movie. Yeah. Um, but my scene got cut. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, they that happens. Over IMDb, like you were in the building, you know what I'm saying? But like, that's, is that how it goes? Like, it's like cut away and then you might get to see the person or. Yeah. Um, I think I'm uncredited if I'm not mistaken for your IMDb for sure. It doesn't say uncredited for, uh, is, on the side. It says something. My phone is, uh, I didn't have it with Leave, me. So I don't think it did. It didn't. Oh, huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, well I'm in it, but I'm like, it's kind of like, uh, like background uh, because it's um did we see the movie did y'all see it yeah i saw i saw half of the movie i'll be totally honest with you <laughs> did you see the first half i'm in the I, I would have been in the first half the first half is what i saw okay yeah i was uh i was one of the guys um i was receiving an award at the uh at the journalist uh banquet so yeah. uh matt's character is on stage um and he's presenting an award but they cut the part after he's like kind of venting and he's like uh and the winner is matt sharf or whatever and then he walks off i think and i played uh sh the guy who was getting the award so when we actually shot it um it was all improv um you know i got i get up there and i accept the award and i'm talking to all the extras <laughs> Um, and it but, was just improv. I mean, I, I, they could have left it in, but I don't think it, it wasn't relevant to the plot. So those things yeah. can be cut, that's, you know, that's kind of like how I was trying to get it. Like it maybe is like the popularity of Ozark to where they're just, you know, putting stuff on, but how, take us through like your like audition situation. Like, do you get it from your agent? Do you like scour like uh scripts did you get how does that process go for an up-and-coming actor oh yeah well i mean to get auditions for tv shows and movies you definitely need an agent um so i got i got it through my agent uh and yeah i mean i felt really good uh when i saw the breakdown i saw it said affable loves his dog has a has has a, something to do with peanut butter <laughs> obviously um and uh i was like i could have fun with this um and i just decided to be myself in the audition i didn't put any layers on when i taped it uh kind of dry, i have kind of like a dry uh sense of humor i guess um like jason bateman i guess uh and i just felt really good about the audition sent it in and then i found out they were gonna go with somebody older and i was like all right well you know right it, this happens it's I've, I've been rejected plenty of times it's just another one and then i found out like just i was driving to charlotte for a call back for a short film and my agent calls me and says hey they want to book you for ozark <laughs> and here and here we are that's so dope that's awesome go ahead Ed. So while, well, now you've mentioned you didn't work with Tom Hanks, but however, you you worked with one of my favorite actors, one of our favorite actors. Um, take us through what it's like, um, you know, whether it be from an educational standpoint or whether it just be from a personality standpoint in general, um, what it's, you know, what it's like to work alongside Jason Bateman, um, who, you know, uh, you know, I've looked into his, his past as well. He's come up through the, you know, through the pipeline, like, like crazy. Um, he's become a, a, an extreme household name. So kind of take us through what it's like to be alongside him for such a big show. Oh, it's, it's, it's been incredible. I mean, like he's, you know, he gets to direct as well. Um, great eye for directing and actors, director, no doubt. Uh, he knows what he's looking for when he's shooting scenes. Uh, he's got, like when he gives you notes um, in between takes, they're easy to understand because, you know, he's been on the other side of the camera, so he gets it. Um, and yeah, he's, he's definitely, 
uh, going to be doing a lot more directing in the future. And it's just a master class getting to work with him in front of the camera as well. I mean, we haven't had a ton of scenes together, um, but when we do, it's a lot of fun. Uh, like the scene and like my favorite scene still is from season one when I show up uh, at Marty and Wendy's, um, I think where they're putting the money in the, uh, near the Blue Cat Lodge. Um, and I come saying, hey, I want my money back. I really like that scene because it kind of shows a different side of Sam. Um, the more intense, like the inner, he's not, you know, just happy-go-lucky well, na naivete all the time. He's, he's, he came with a purpose into that scene. And it was great because uh, I think Jason was directing that episode. And when we were rehearsing it, I came in, uh, when we rehearsed the scene, I came in kind of hot. Um, and he was like, that's good. That's good. But let's bring it down a bit. Um, I just want to protect your performance, uh, where it's more because less is more, um, definitely on the big screen or on the small screen, the camera picks up, you know, everything. So you don't have to push. Um, and he was great at helping, uh, you know, me realize that. And so, and then what you had was a great scene with me, Laura Lenny, like a national treasure, and <laughs> Jason Bateman. Uh, it's just, it's that, what more can a guy ask for? That scene, no joke, bro. I was like frightened for you. I thought they were gonna like ax you out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like Sam coming, like he is straight up G. <laughs> and it's funny, I'm like, we, I actually, I'm like, I like your character. I'm like, oh shit, they're gonna tell Helen, and, uh, and, uh, and he's gonna be done. So. <laughs> Well, it was funny because the line uh, is, it's give me my fucking money. Yeah. Uh, but Kevin <laughs> was talking to Jason Bateman and Laura Linney, who's a freaking sweetheart. Yeah. So in, I, I was like, maybe Sam would kind of draw it back a little bit with a, and end it with a please. So I put please on the end. <laughs> oh, you did that. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a script. It was like, give me my fucking money. But I was like, just, just give me my fucking money, please. <laughs> <laughs> dot, 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 please. Yeah. So speaking of the cast, uh, yeah. recently you had posted that um, the cast of Ozark donated food to uh, can two co Kansas City hospitals. Uh, how did that come about, and how awesome was that, especially during these times? Oh, that was great. Uh, Jason Butler Harner, who plays, uh, who played uh, Agent Petty. Um, kind of got that started and then uh Jessica Francis Dukes who's one of my good friends now in from season three Maya Miller she's got good stuff coming up in season four if there's a season four obviously it's not official yet but yeah, not um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so I, I heard it from them and then I got on board and then everybody else got on board and yeah it was it's great I mean you know to be able to give back like that um when you can, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I, I try whenever I can to do th stuff like that. So. Yeah, definitely during these hard times. Well, um, so first, as you know, we're from Chicago. So yeah, the weeks have been pretty awesome. Uh, awesome. But the last bitter, dance. Bittersweet as well, because we suck right now. Um, <laughs> but we're looking forward to better days here. We got, we're under some new management, things of that nature. Have you been watching The Last Dance? Is The Last Dance something that you, you know, has caught your attention? Um, obviously, you're in the realm, the age group where you've been able to experience uh, Michael Jordan. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I, I love this question. I'm a, I grew up a huge Michael Jordan fan. It was always, always Michael Jordan for me from the get-go. Um, especially when he came out of retirement, it was, I mean, what was the, what was the, uh, he had so many like, uh, like kid, uh, like deep, like videos that, uh, what was it? Michael Jordan's playground. Yeah, Michael Jordan's playground. Come that was me. Yeah. Michael Jordan's playground. I checked out of the library. So many, it was so hard to get <laughs> sometimes cause it was always checked out, but I still remember that. Um, Space Jam. I mean, it's like 
Yeah, and I got to work with Michael Jordan. Uh, I know um, in a Novant Healthcare commercial, yeah. one of my earlier uh, wow. bookings. Wow. And his, we had to come in uh, a day before to do all the blocking for the actual shoot for the following day, because his time is very very limited. Like he's got tons of things. To, I mean, he's Michael Jordan. I mean, he's. <laughs> So we had to be good to go for the actual commercial. So they had to know where the camera was going to be and all that stuff. Um, so he could get in and get out kind of thing. And I got to meet him. Um, and I told his uh, assistant that was there, I was like, just so you know, I'm a huge, huge Jordan fan. I, I, I grew up uh, idolizing the guy. Uh, I sent a, I remember sending like a little basketball card with a, um, cause there was this, there was this book that you could, that you could buy that had all the addresses for all the, uh, like sports teams and things. So I found the Chicago bulls in the book and I put a Michael Jordan card in there and asked him, please sign it for me. You're awesome. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, he didn't sign it, but they sent, they sent the card back, but they also sent back like this cool, like Nike little pamphlet. Um, but yeah, getting to meet him was awesome. Shaking his hand. It was a brief meeting. I didn't get to take a, I didn't ask to take a picture. Um, and you know, I think it was flip. I had a flip phone or something. So <laughs> I mean, that, it wouldn't have, what was I going to do with that? Um, so yeah, but he's, yeah, that was just, that was amazing getting to meet Michael Jordan. It's awesome. Like just that whole, it just brings a lot of generations together watching that show us, uh, me and Anthony having the blessing to cover the NBA and the Bulls, like he said, they're totally different than they were back in the day. Yeah, um, I just finished it yesterday, The Last Dance. Yeah. So. And, yeah. It's, and even knowing that it was The Last Dance, you're watching it thinking, maybe there's going to be a, maybe he'll come back, even though you know that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> but you still have, I, but I had no idea that they actually tried to get them to come back kind of i was like there had to jerry Krause had to you know say that it was i mean yeah he said at the beginning of the 98 season phil jackson wouldn't be back which he never should have said that just created so much turmoil uh but then that also drove mj and pippen and rodman to say hey if this is our last dance fuck it let's do it let's <laughs> let's show them what they're going to be missing yeah. Uh, like yeah. being out of state and you you knowing that like being in Chicago and watching the local news when he said that we said the same thing like why would you say that at media day like you just started the season that way and he was one of those like in the in the uh, project when they were saying he just had the the syndrome where he had to be in charge and it yeah was, but he was so I mean, he was, wasn't he responsible for getting Pippen and getting Jordan and getting Phil? So what or not he, Jordan? Yeah. The only person he wasn't responsible for was Jordan, but everything else was him. Yeah. Well, he was, he's, he was one of the greatest general managers. Um, you can't take that away. Even Scotty said that he was like, yeah. I mean, he, a lot of people probably passed on Scotty and he, he got Scotty, he Scotty Pippen. Yeah. The same exact year. And they traded like some bum for him. So it's like he he gets his just due. He I mean he's in the rafters at the United Center. Yeah. Oh. But I just think it was like I didn't get Jordan, so I wanna oh. on my own. It was crazy. But I mean, it was the greatest time, at least in sports, especially in my life. But being with a partner that's a little younger and Anthony and letting that coming out so he could see it, now he understands why it's like it's like a question people ask and you like roll your eyes. Like who's the baddest? Really? Are we talking about this? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's definitely MJ. It's, yeah. I, mean, I mean, after, I think after watching the documentary, I think that cements it as, uh -huh. and just getting to watch like, because I think 91, 92, 93, I was still pretty young. So that was really cool to see all that. Cause I didn't get in till he came back. Yeah. Um, but then getting to watch some of the stuff where they showed, Back when he was in college, that was really cool. And I, it was footage that I had never seen before. And I love the line. I think it was his, his first uh, 
it was his first year in the pros. So one of the one of the reporters was like, "How is it uh, transitioning into the uh, NBA from college?" And he's, I think he was just like, "It's pretty easy for me," <laughs> or something like that. It was just, yeah. it was like it hasn't really been that difficult for me. Yep. I was Jordan. like, "Yeah, that's Jordan." So, uh, what's next for Kevin L. Johnson? Um, well, I was working on a uh, pretty big project before, uh, before everything shut down. Uh, so I got to finish that. Um, I wish I could talk about it right now, but I can't sign an NDA, but that'll probably be out next year. Um, and then, you know, hopefully, uh, we'll s start shooting season four. I know Netflix hasn't said anything yet, but it's, I feel really good about it. Um, and I think the rest of the cast feels really good about it. The writers are all, I mean, you know, you, you go like writers start writing for the next season, no matter what, um, bef until, until they're like, okay, Hey, we're not coming back. Okay, fine. So that's real um, life. Like you guys are literally waiting for Netflix to get back to you and say, all right, you're renewed. That's like for real. This isn't BS. No, no, not BS. Uh, but I think is, I don't see why they would, not bring it you back for at least one or two more seasons. You guys are Netflix original right now, honest to God, uh, not because you're on the show. So I don't see why there would, I mean, the way that the last season had ended. Yeah. <laughs> it, you guys can't go out like that. Yeah. It's not the way season one, it, like season one was a sit, like Jason said that season one is a standalone season. Yeah. But when we got picked up for a season two and a season three, they were like, all right, well, we're going to leave some cliffhangers mm -hmm. at the end of season two and season three, because I think we got something special and people want us to come back. So yeah, it's, I, I feel good about it. I'll say that. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to close it out, but we are binge and bartend. So <laughs> we need uh, Kev to let us know what his go-to drink is whenever he's out, whether it's, you know, going to the club, bar, or just staying at home? What, what's your go-to for the drink? Oh, wow. Uh, man, it used to be like uh, JMO and Ginger. Uh, um, that used to be my go-to. Or just a shot of JMO uh, <laughs> and a ginger back because I'm a wussy sometimes. But <laughs> um, Or a pickle back. That's actually – people are like, what? That's so weird. But it – I like that. It really, it takes the sting away, especially if you're thinking about having a few more during the night. So, um, beer wise, uh, Guinness. I mean, if I'm going out to a bar, Guinness is the easy go to. Uh, I do like Samuel Smith's oatmeal stout. I oh. mean, that's a, I mean, I'm a big stout, oatmeal stout guy. Uh, yeah, those kind of drinks. Yeah. Any, any, anything and everything if it's a, if, if people are offering so we're gonna make up we're gonna we gotta put a jameson drink together for the uh the conclusion of this episode yeah jameson and gender real simple man kevin i i greatly appreciate you joining us man it's it's an awesome situation uh you're very down to earth dude loves love michael jordan that's all i care about man <laughs> Good buddy life with that we appreciate it Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Thank you, All right, guys. All right. All right. Later.